We we're just hearing from our royal correspondent about preparations being made for the King's speech. We're focusing now on that, a big day in Parliament tomorrow. And we're asking, uh, you know, what exactly it means for the Conservatives and what we can expect to see uh, in that. Let's speak to Lucy Powell. She is shadow leader of the House and she joins us this morning with her take on all of those things. And um, I was just reading a piece that you'd written in the Mirror over the weekend ahead of the King's speech. And you talked about how the Labour Party has changed. And I just wanted to challenge you on it because just watching from the the ringside it feels as though sort of imploding on sort of similar factions all over again familiar factions with everything that's happening in the Middle East can she hear me? well no I would d dispute that um, I think what Keir Starmer has shown over the last uh, three or four years is that he is leading a changed Labour Party that is uh, united that is focused on uh, how we want to change the country uh, for the better. And, uh, you know, no one wants to see uh, people resigning from the Labour Party. And obviously there are some differences of opinion there at the moment on, on what's happening in the Middle East. But largely, on the whole, uh, everybody in the Labour Party is agreed on the fact that we want to see an end to the cycle of violence and an end to the needless uh, loss of life in Israel and Gaza and we want to see the hostages uh, freed and we also all agree that we want to see a long-term peaceful political solution towards a two-state uh, solution with a safe and secure Israel and a free and independent Palestine and that we want to see international law upheld at all times. You know, these are principles on which the Labour Party is uh, united and how we get there uh, there are some differing opinions uh, about but on the whole I think we all agree on where we need to get to. Quite a lot to unpick there but those differences of opinions that you're reflecting there 11 councillors this morning having quit that they say Sir Keir Starmer either cannot or will not heed their concerns or acknowledge the sentiments within their communities and he's particularly turning a blind eye to the grassroots of the Labour Party. Well, we're very sensitive to the range of views that there are and mm. listening and heeding and trying to bring people together in our communities about these uh, issues. And I'm talking to you this morning from Manchester and uh, I represent a very diverse constituency. And here in Manchester, we have a very long standing, large Jewish community. We also have a large Muslim community and many other communities, all of whom uh, share their anxiety about wanting to see what is happening in Israel and Gaza coming to an end as, as quickly as possible and uh, for hostages to be freed and needless loss of life uh, to, to end. And um, Keir Starmer has set out his view. He's the leader of the Labour Party, but he's constantly talking to colleagues, to people uh, on the front line to grassroots uh, members as well and trying to chart a path that, that keeps everyone together while also gets the outcomes that we all want to see. Well, uh, he's leader of the party, leader of the country is Rishi Sunak and he's got his King's speech um, tomorrow. Um, as, the, as the shadow leader of the, the House, what do you make of what is being put for the King to relay tomorrow? Well, I think what we're going to see from this government is a pattern that we've seen uh, over recent months, which is a government which has given up on governing. Uh, the Prime Minister said over the weekend that it would be a King's speech that didn't contain any gimmicks. Yet all we've seen uh, so far are announcements of things that don't actually need uh, legislation anyway and that are only designed in order to create political uh, wedge uh, issues and, and can actually only be described as, as stunts, really. And this is Rishi Sunak's first King speech, uh, what is quite probably, hopefully, going to be his only King speech. And it's a really powerful moment for any government to set out the laws of this country that it wants to change and how it's going to change things for the better for people of this country. And all we're hearing are these sort of small fry, uh, tinkering at the edges uh, things uh, like 
uh, North Sea gas and oil licensing, which doesn't even need to be legislated for anyway and won't do anything to lower people's bills or bring about more energy security or hearing from the Home Secretary that she wants to ban charities from giving tents to, to homeless people. You know, these are not mm. uh, the big answers to the big challenges the country faces. And, uh, you know, this really okay. is a government that's run out of road and run out of ideas. Well, let's talk about some of those challenges that the country faces. Um, the King, uh, hop from the speech tomorrow, will be at the Cenotaph on Sunday. Uh, there's lots of debate about whether or not these pro-Palestine uh, marches are appropriate to be held on that day. What is your own view? Well, my own view is that Remembrance Sunday and Armistice Day are very, very important days for us to come together as a country and mark those who gave their lives for the peace and prosperity that we uh, enjoy. And we want to be able to do that in a way that is respectful and peaceful and without uh, disturbance. Uh, but these are operational matters for the police. And my understanding is that the police are working very hard to ensure that any uh, other uh, protests or things that happen at the weekend would be done far away from uh, and at a different time completely from remembrance uh, events. And if the police think that they can handle that and manage that, that's a decision for them. If they feel they can't handle and manage that and that there are other concerns, then that is a decision for them as well. But um, I think we all want to be able to come together in a respectful and peaceful way and mark armistice as we do uh, every year. Okay. Uh, Lucy Powell, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. For